Good morning, afternoon, or evening. How y'all doing today? Um, today we're going to be simplifying uh, some more radical expressions. And we're going to simplify them using rational exponents. Those are the fraction exponents. And we're also going to be simplifying them using radicals. Now, the good news. All of the exponent laws that we learned before are still applicable here. Okay. The only difference is now that the exponents may be in fractional form. But it doesn't mean that you can't do it or that you can't follow the steps. So, <laughs> excuse me, all of this has been taught, but I'm just going to really quickly go over it again. So please try to, try to uh, refresh your brain with this. Remember that a to the 0, anything to the 0 power is 1. When you multiply the same bases, you keep the same base and add the exponents. When I have a to the negative r, that's a negative there, kind of hard to see, but that is a negative r. When I have a negative exponent, I bring that bad boy down, right? That becomes 1 over a to the r. Vice versa, if I have 1 over a to the negative r, that equals a to the r over 1. You just reverse it. If I go from, from denominator to numerator or numerator to denominator, I change the sign of the exponent. When I am dividing the same bases, I keep the base and subtract the exponents. When I raise a power to a power or a product to a power, this outside exponent gets distributed to all of the exponents inside of the parentheses. When I just straight up have a power raised to a power, I multiply that power to every, every single variable or number, the exponents of those. Uh, inside of the of the uh, parentheses. When I have a quotient raised to a power, I'm going to distribute that outside exponent to every exponent within the parentheses. And when I have a, I'm sorry, there's a little light, to the negative a, b, to the negative r, that equals b over a to the r. You simply reciprocate it and you change the sign of the exponent. All of this was old stuff. I just wanted to just go ahead and refresh your memory a little bit. When you are asked to simplify expressions, especially when we're dealing with radicals, okay, all exponents must be positive. I don't know if you remember that, but must, all, all exponents must be positive. Each base only occurs once. For example, if you have the square root and you got x squared and then you got x to the seventh, that's not... That's not uh, simplified. You can only have one variable in there. All the other variables were either combined or pulled out of the radical. And there are no powers written to powers. So for example, you're never going to have this. That will not be simplified. Okay? You can convert that. You can, you can do something with that. So that's what we're looking for when you want a simplified radical expression. Okay, so how does it work? Let's look at number one here. I got 27 to the 1 half times 27 to the 5 sixth. My friends, don't I have the same base here? So do I have to convert this to a radical form? No. Then don't do that. This is 27 to the 1 half plus 5 sixth. Now you got to be, you know, masters of fractions. This goes to a 6. That goes to a 3, right? So I've got 27 to the 8 sixth, which equals 27 to the 4 thirds. Now, now, here comes the part that we did yesterday. Doesn't this turn into the cube root of 27 to the 4th power? What is the cube root of 27 straight up? 3. And then what is 3 to the 4th power? 81. Ding dong, the witch is gone. Does that make sense, gentlemen? Okay. I've got here 8 to the 1 third divided by 8 to the 5 thirds. Okay. In this particular case, this is going to be 8 to the 1 third, um, my, to the 1 third, sorry, minus 5 thirds. So this is going to come out to be 8 to the negative 4 thirds. But I can't have that negative exponent, 
So this drops down to 8 to the 4 thirds positive. Then this equals 1 over the cube root of 8 to the 4th. What is the cube root of 8, my friends? What is 2 to the 4th? 16. So this is 1 over 16. Do you see how it's using the skills from yesterday as well? So if anyone was confused with 8, 2, this is partly uh, 9, 2. This is partly 9, 2 as well. What happens when I raise a power to a power? That's exactly right. You multiply them. So this is 36 to the 10 twentieths, because remember, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, which equals 36 to the 1 half, which is the square root of 36, which equals 6 straight up. For D, I have this x to the 1 half times y to the 2 thirds raised to the 3 halves. Please remember that you're going to multiply. You're going to distribute that to every exponent you see, my friends. So this is x to the 1 half times 3 halves times y to the 2 thirds times 3 halves. Okay? So this becomes x to the 3 fourths times y. You can leave it like that or you can put it in radical form, which in radical form it would be y to the 4th root of x cubed. That can work, or that can work. If I tell you, or someone else tells you, or a test tells you, leave it in exponential uh, form, that's the exponential form. If they say leave it in radical form, that's radical form. Does that make sense, gentlemen? You promise? Okay. Let's keep going. X to the 1 half times X to the 1 third. That's x to the 1 half plus 1 third. That goes to 6, that goes to 2, that goes to 6, that goes to 3. So that's x to the 5 sixth over, I have x to the 1 twelfth raised to the second power, so I multiply that to every single exponent inside, giving me x to the 1 sixth. So now I have x to the 1 sixth. But guess what? I can simplify that. Am I not dividing the same base here, my friends? So this is x to the 5 sixth minus 1 sixth, which equals x to the 4 sixth, which equals x to the 2 thirds, which you can leave it like that. That's exponential form. Or you could go ahead and say the cube root of x squared, because you cannot simplify that any further. You guys with me here? Okay. For f, please remember that exponents come before multiplication and division. So this is x to the 2 thirds, y to the negative 1 times. Please remember to distribute this. So this is x to the negative 2 thirds times y to the 1 third. x to the 2 thirds times x to the negative 2 thirds. When you add 2 thirds and negative 2 thirds, they cancel bye bye y to the negative 1 times y to the 1 third. Well, this is y to the negative 1 plus 1 third. This denominator becomes a 3. That becomes a negative 3. So that's y to the negative 2 thirds, which equals 1 over y to the 2 thirds in exponential form, or 1 over the cube root of y squared in radical form. Please note, that we cannot have radicals in the denominator. We're getting close to the section where I teach you how to, how to do what's called rationalization. You can rationalize later on soon, soon, bless you, to get rid of that radical. But for right now, that's the skill you have, and that's good. May I continue, my friends? Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, I have 9 to, 9xy to the 4 thirds over x to the 5 6 times y to the negative 2 thirds, all raised to the 1 half. Easy peasy. Distribute this 1 half to every single exponent inside of here. So this is 9 to the 1 half, x to the 1 half, y to the 2 thirds, over x to the 5 twelfths, 
and y to the negative one-third. It's not one-sixth, because one-half times two-thirds, the two's cancel, so it's negative one-third. You with me? Okay, now, let's make our lives easy here, my friends. What's, this, what's the square root of nine? In other words, nine to the one-half. Three, okay. I have x to the one-half here, and x to the five-twelfths here, right? I'm dividing the same variable. So what happens when I divide by the same variable? I subtract. So I'm going to have x to the 1 half minus 5 twelfths. This goes to 12. That goes to 12. So that's going to be, uh, no, what am I talking about? That goes to 6. Sorry. Sorry. That goes to 6. Yeah, so it's going to be x to the 1 twelfth, um, yeah, at the top. So that's x to the 1 12th. Done with that as well. And now, what do I do with that negative? I bring it up. So what's y to the 2 thirds times y to the 1 third? Just straight up y. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well done. Now this bad boy, is this 8 being affected by that 2 thirds? Absolutely not. Thank you. Great job, my friends. This is simply 8 times. 125 to the 2 thirds times a to the 1 half, because 6 over 12 is 1 half, times b to the negative 2 thirds. Okay? So let's go one by one here. Let's see what we could do with this. This is 8 times the cube root of 125 squared times the square root of a times 1 over the cube root of b squared. Do you see what I did there? You sure, my brothers? Okay. What's the cube root of 25, of 125? 5. And what's 5 squared? So I got a 25 for that one. Times just square root of a or a to the 1 half. I really don't care how you, how you express it unless I specifically say to you, radical form or rational form. So do you guys want even a radical or rational for this one? Radical. Okay, so I got square root of A and over all of this over the cube root of B squared. So this is going to equal 200 square root of A over cube root of B squared. This is big boy math already, my friends. This is heavy stuff. You should be proud of yourselves so that you're even in this class. <laughs> Come again? I'm sorry, what? Why didn't I distribute the A? The 8, because 8 is a number, not an exponent. 8 times 25. If that was an exponent, then you distribute that exponent to everything. Okay? Now, let's look at this, my friends. This is easy stuff. Do I have an eighth root of 16? <laughs> no. However, don't I have four 16s here? Okay. So this is 16 times 16 times 16 times 16. Is everyone with me there? Doesn't these break up into 4 times 4? Four? 4 times 4? Four. 4 times 4? Four. 4 times 4? I need a set of how many to pull one value out? 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 fours. Bam. Have a good day. It's, it's, I, I like this. I know I'm a bit of a math dork, but I enjoy it because it's kind of like a puzzle. You're just kind of, you know, doing the puzzle pieces here. Now, how on earth can I combine a square root and a cube root? Oh, my God, Mr. Morrow, what are you doing to us? I'm so proud of you. Change them into the rational exponents. Very good. That's x to the 1 half over x to the 2 thirds. What do you do when the, when the bases are being divided? Subtract the exponents. So x to the 1 half minus 2 thirds. That goes to 6, that goes to 4. That goes to 6, that goes to 3. 
So this is x to the negative one-sixth, which equals 1 over x to the one-sixth. Is this making sense, my brothers? Promise? Okay. You guys rule. Yes. Yes. Letter A, you mean, yeah? No, because 8 does not go into 4. 8 does not go into 4. This has to be larger than the X, than the uh, root to pull one out. Okay? Thank you, sir. Okay, cube root of x of 64, x to the 6, y cubed. Is there a cube root of 64? What is it? 8, 4. What's the cube root of x to the 6? How many times does 3 go into 6? Okay, but did I not pull out an even from an odd root? So, so it has to be? Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. You pull an even out of an odd. Oh, no, 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 you're right, you're right. Sorry, Mr. Moore had a little bit of a, a brain, uh, brain issue there. And because it's cubed, it can be negative. Come on, Moore, get with the program. And then the cube root of y cubed? Now, this is spectacular. This is the square root of the cube root of y. So look, check this out, guys. Isn't this just the cube root of y, which is y to the one-third, raised to the one-half? So this is just y to the one-sixth, or the sixth root of y. There's no stress here. Yes, sir. Yes, you could multiply the yes, the three and the two. Yes, if you if you're if you're cognizant of it, you're aware of it. Heck yeah. The tenth root of thirty-six to the fifth. Ooh, what's going on here, Mr. Moore? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. The uh, thirty-sixes, right? But aren't there two sixes for each of these? So when I go two, four, six, eight, ten sixes, so this is going to equal. 6. Real quick, last thing. The 4th root of 16 is 2. The 4th root of x to the 8 is x squared. The 4th root of y to the 12th is y cubed. An absolute value. Does that make sense, my friends? Okay, thank you very much. Have a great day. Homework is valid.